In this video, we're going to look at a quick and easy way to find vertical asymptotes for secant graphs from an equation. So the big idea is that we're going to apply the horizontal transformations of our equation to the vertical asymptotes of our parent secant graph. So here's a general form secant equation. And let's make sure we know the pieces. So the horizontal transformations are whatever the inputs of the secant function are. So it's whatever terms are there inside the parentheses of the secant function. And then take a look at the graph of secant, just the y equals secant x, if you aren't familiar with where those asymptotes are, but they happen at pi over two plus pi k. Um, think that's where the zeros of the cosine function are. Okay, so this is what it looks like. We will take those horizontal transformations those inputs of secant and set them equal to pi over two plus pi k, the vertical asymptotes of our parent secant graph. Once you do that, it's super simple. Solve for x and do know that k is an integer. So depending on what integer you substitute in to the equation, you'll get a different asymptote. But the equation as a whole, I like to call it the asymptote generating equation for your secant graph. Um, so it's really a nice concise way to represent all of the vertical asymptotes for the graph. So let's take a look at an example um, to see how this works. Okay, let's say we wanted to find the asymptotes of y equals negative three secant to x plus pi over four. So we know our quick and easy trick is to take the inputs of our secant function. So that's here, two parentheses, x plus pi over four and then we set that equal to those parent asymptotes of secant. So those happen at pi over two plus pi k. Okay, now that we have that, we can solve this equation for x. So in this case, it makes the most sense to first divide both sides of the equation by two. So we'll show that here. Make sure when you divide the right side, you're dividing each term by two, or think of it as multiplying by one half, if that helps you. Okay, so then on the left side, you have x plus pi over four. And then on the right side, you have pi over four plus pi over two k. And now we can subtract pi over four from both sides. Okay, so let's show that just for good measure and see that on the right hand side, pi over four is only a like term with the original pi over four right here. K is not a like term. So it kind of is the pi over two k term is just gonna kind of hang there. So our final asymptote gener generating equation will be x equals zero plus pi over two k. Or you could see this written without the zero, um, just in a slightly simpler form of x equals pi over two k. All right, so let's try out substituting in a few values for k so you can see how that works. Um, and then we'll take a look at this actual graph to confirm that uh, we are correct. Okay, so again, here's our equation and let's substitute in different values for k. Um, so you can see if k is zero, that's going to make x equals zero an asymptote. So that's the y-axis. We should expect a vertical asymptote there for this graph. You could let k equal to one and very easy simplifying here since it turned out to be such a nice equation. We have x equals pi over two. Um, just for good measure, let's substitute in negative one and you see that produces an asymptote at negative pi over two. So you see that these asymptotes are spaced at a distance of pi over two, um, and that goes back to that plus pi over two k term. So that's what you're seeing there. Um, and note that we haven't actually found the period, but these asymptotes are happening twice a period. Okay, so let's take a look now at the graph to confirm that we have the correct asymptotes. Okay, so here's our picture of our graph. Here's our equation for our asymptotes. And notice that the three asymptotes that we predicted are here. Here's the one when k equaled to negative one. Here's the one from k equals zero. Here's the one from k equals one. And so this would be a great one to just test out a few more values of k so you get even more comfortable. You can see when k is two, if you let k equal to two, you should have that asymptote at pi. And so you can predict, I'm sure, this would be the asymptote for k is three. 
Um, and just keep testing this out. The more values you plug in, the more comfortable you'll become with this representation. Um, and like I said, it's a very great concise representation to find all the vertical asymptotes of a secant graph. Be sure to check the links in the video description. I'll probably post um, at least one more example of this. Um, and I'll also post links so that you can go see the method for graphing secant equations. Um, so there'll be a bunch of worked examples for that as well. Thanks for watching.